Greetings, saints of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but wherever we are and whatever we're doing, that is the perfect backdrop to give the Lord praise and to reflect on his goodness to you. And I hope that even now, as you join me in worship, that you not only feel the presence of the Lord, but you remember all of the wonderful acts that the Lord has done unto you. Hearing that, why don't you join me in Psalm 150, in reading Psalm 150. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? God, how we come to you right now with hearts filled of appreciation and gratitude. You are an awesome God. You are a wonderful God. And even though we're in the house, some of us uh, hunkered down because of this coronavirus thing, we've had an opportunity to build strong relationships with spouses and families and loved ones. And we thank you for that, oh God. We pray now, O oh God, that as we go through this worship experience and as we share together, that we have a deeper desire to follow you and a wider understanding of just how awesome you are. Our praise then, O oh God, is not based on what you do for us, but our praise and worship is based upon our understanding of who you are and you are God all by yourself. Even in a season of famine, you are still God. Even in a season of sickness, you are still God. So wherever the members of our wonderful fellowship are, whatever we might be doing right now, we stop to turn to you to say that you are God and we thank you for being in our lives. We give you all the praise, the glory and the honor. And it's in the mighty majestic name of Jesus the Christ we pray and ask it all. And all the people of God said, Amen. Slow! 
Join me, brothers and sisters, as we look at a passage that the Lord has laid on my heart and is found there in Philippians chapter 4, and verse 7. And it reads, As such, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And for just a few minutes, I want to use this as a topic, maintaining peace when everything is going to pieces. One of the hardest things to do is to try to keep it together when everything in your life has been uprooted. Uh, to try to maintain that Christian control that God wants all of us to have, uh, which is a symbol of Christian maturity. Uh, to try to be unscathed by the adverse situations and circumstances that are arriving and arising in our lives. It's hard to try to maintain our cool in a situation like this. But I come to try to encourage you today by informing and declaring to you that we can maintain our cool in every situation that we have, not just what we're going through at this present time, but we can maintain our cool when everything is being turned upside down. You and I as Christians can be able to let things around us not affect the inside of us. Oh yes, indeed, beloved. Uh, this is a very needed word uh, in our society today because everybody seems to be in an uproar. Everybody seems to be frantic. Everybody seems to be panicking. And we've been told and we've been encouraged not to panic, uh, but to make a plan. But in spite of those encouraging words, we are seeing everybody in a panic state. But I come to tell the people of God, and I come to tell Christians, that you can maintain your peace when everything seems to be falling apart. There are people out there who are losing their source of income. And they're losing their, their minds. There are people out there who are losing family members. And, and that's understandable. But just because you lose a family member as a child of God, we can be concerned. We can be affected. We can be hurt. But we don't have to go to pieces Oh yes, we can have peace in the midst of everything that we are going through. I come to tell you, we don't have to freak out. We don't have to lose our minds. We don't have to go berserk just because we hear the word coronavirus. I come to tell somebody today that you and I, as we go through this, we can maintain our Christian posture. You and I can maintain our walk with the Lord. We can maintain our testimony and we don't have to lose any of our, our being or who God has made us to be, who God has called us to be, that even in the midst of this situation you and I have, we have peace. I need to have somebody to understand that you and I don't have to get up and dread tomorrow, that we don't have to dread watching the news. We don't have to hate turning on the news at 5 o'clock or even turning away from it in order to see what the, the, the reporters have to say. Because we can have peace in the, midst of, in the midst of this storm. We can have peace of mind. We can have peace of heart. We can go to bed at night and we can sleep sound and feel free to enjoy ourselves in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh yes, I know as we look around down here on this earth, we can't seem to find peace anywhere. People are looking to Washington for the president to do something and, and he seemingly doesn't know what to do. And he have experts around him and, and they don't know what to do because they don't know exactly what's going on. But my question is, is are you going to look up? We've looked to Washington, we've looked to Austin, we've looked to everywhere. But I want to challenge you today to stop and look up. The Bible says, I'll look to the hills from which cometh my help. For all of my help comes from the Lord. I come to tell somebody, you can remain stable even in these unstable, unstable times. You know the time of the text. Beloved Paul is here and he's writing to the church at Philippi. And many of you who already have studied this scripture, you know that uh, one of, the, one of the, 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 the supporters at the church at Philippi had come to give Pastor Paul a care package on behalf of the church at Philippi. And he's there, he's giving Paul this package, and Paul is so grateful that the church at Philippi had thought about him, and he sits down now, and he pens a letter to them to thank them. Oh yeah, for all that they had done. 
while the, while the messenger was there, he began to tell him about the plight of things that's going on back home. Told him about one of the fights that was going on in the church. And Paul wrote them back to tell them that this is a time that y'all got to be together. That as the church, you got to stand together. And I think that's appropriate for us to declare that today. This is a time for the church not to be falling apart, not to fall out, not to disagree one with another. This is a time for the church of Jesus Christ to stand up and to stand, stand together in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The writer, the, the, the writer of this, Paul, he writes them and have them to understand that I want to encourage you in the midst of all that's going on because you knew persecution was going on as well and, and, and people were getting upset and they were losing heart and losing faith. And so he writes them and tells them that we've got to be steadfast in the Lord. Oh yes, in the midst of persecution, in the midst of everything that's going on, we can have, we can have peace. Well, let's, let's see what Paul was talking about here. What, what makes him say that when everything is going on, I can have peace? Is it that easy, Reverend? Is it, is it, is it that easy for me to look out and see what this virus is doing and what it's doing to people and how it's making people act? As a child of God, how is it that I can have peace? Peace. Well, I'm glad you asked, brothers and sisters, because Paul says here, he says you can have peace and you can be assured because you have the presence of God. Oh, yeah. Right there in verse five, it says that the Lord is at hand. And that's what I need to tell you today, church, that the Lord is at hand. When this thing hit us, when this plague, this calamity hit us, God did not retreat back to heaven. He did not close the gates made of pearls and go hide behind the mansions up there in the sky. The Bible records for us that God is at hand. And when you look at that word at hand in the Greek, it's egos, which means to crowd one's space. And I need to, I need to declare to somebody that God is ready to crowd your space. You know what it is when people crowd your space. Maybe you've been in line at the grocery store or you were on mass transportation and somebody was all up on you breathing down your neck and you got irritated. But the fact of the matter is, is that think about Jesus. Think about God. In the midst of this crisis, God is trying to crowd your space. You don't have to wait on God to come from anywhere because God is big enough. And the old folks said it this way, that he's in the same place all over this world. He's at the same place every time. And, 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 and he's, at, he's in Dallas. He's in Fort Worth. He's in Washington. He's in Texas. All at the same time. God is standing right there. Well, he's not idle as he stands with us, as he's crowding our space. God is trying to have each and every one of us to know that you can't handle it, but I'm here for you and I can handle it on your behalf. We need to understand that, that, that God is God is with us. He's right there. All we have to do is lean and depend on him. I'm, I'm reminded a few years ago, me and my sisters, two of my sisters, Carla and Rhonda, we weren't supposed to do it, but we did it anyway uh, because my daddy had already taught us better. But uh, we had never been to a haunted house uh, because my father had already told us that that wasn't the thing that children of God do. But uh, we snuck off, me, Carla, and Rhonda, and we went to the haunted house. Well, when we got in there, Carla was on one side, Rhonda was on the other side, and we got in there and they started scaring us. And, and Carla grabbed, me, grabbed one arm, Rhonda grabbed the other, and both of them put their faces in my back and pushed me through the haunted house. What they didn't know, I was probably more scared than they were. But the fact of the matter is, I, it, I, as I thought about it as years went on, my sisters grabbed me because in the midst of them being scared, they had a brother there that they thought could take care of them in the midst of their fear. That's what agrees me. It means to reach out and grab. It means to crowd somebody's space that they're so close you can grab hold to them. Well, my encouragement to you today is reach out and grab Jesus. He's that close to you. In the midst of your crisis, in the midst of your calamity, you don't have to cry loud. You don't have to, you, you don't have to scream to the top of your lungs. All you've got to do is invite God in your life that you might have 
you might have peace. Oh yeah, grab the Lord today because he's ready to handle whatever burdens you have, whatever cares and whatever concerns, whatever fears that you might have. I challenge you to greet him, to grab him. Well, you say, Reverend, how can I grab him? I'm glad you asked that as well. I can grab him through the word of God. The, the word of God says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The word of God where Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. The word of God says, though a host of encampment uh, uh, is around me, I will not be afraid. Though my enemies came to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. The Bible says, grab this word now, that the Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life whom shall I be afraid grab God today I know we have a lot of fear that's going on but somebody reach out and grab God because God is near oh yeah let me move on uh, because I'm running out of time but you can be assured of peace because God is at hand but there's something else uh, you can be assured of peace because your petition can be made known before God. Right there in verse 6 it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. One of, the, one of the greatest problems that we as Christians have today is that a whole lot of us do a lot of talking about God, but we don't do a lot of talking to God. And at a time like this, it's time for the saints to call upon the Lord. Oh yes, that's what prayer was designed for. Prayer is not supposed to be some outside show in order to impress people that make people think that you, you're really tight with God. Prayer is conversation to God. It's conversation with God. It's allowing you to say what you need to say to God, but then being quiet long enough to have God to say something back to you. In the midst of this, you and I can have peace because we have the ability to tell God all about it. You got to call. You got to call on him. You got to call on the rock of my salvation. You got to call on the man who can handle anything. As I told you before, this took us by surprise, but it did not take God by surprise. And believe it or not, God already sees the end of this whole crisis. I know you're going to talk to each other about it, but as you talk to each other about it, talk to God about it. I just need to know, is there anybody here who has ever, anybody listening to me, have you ever? talk to God because the God that I talk to, uh, he's so wonderful, he's so awesome and powerful that he can save you from your sins. He's just that powerful. The God that I talk to is a deliverer. He can bring you out of your despair. He can bring you out of your depression. He can bring you out of your calamity. He can bring you even out of this crisis. Uh, you and I ought to try talking. Yeah, we ought to try talking to God. Oh yeah, you talk to him because I guarantee you when you talk to him, he will talk back and he will put your heart, your mind, and your soul at ease. The God I talk to can change situations. The God I talk to can change circumstances. The God I talk to can turn enemies into friends. He can reestablish relationships that had been, has been torn asunder. The old folks said that he can open doors that no man can close. He can close a door that men have shut. And if there is no door, the God I serve can put a whole window there. Somebody said he's a burden bearer, a heavy load sharer. Talk to God, whatever your concerns are, talk to him. Oh yes, when I was younger, I would, I would call on daddy because that's all I knew. I had not had a personal relationship with God, but I knew that as long as I had my daddy, everything would be alright. 
no matter what it was, if I could just get my daddy on the phone, if I could just talk to my daddy and tell him all about it, I knew in my heart that, that my daddy could handle whatever was bothering me. Oh, but brothers and sisters, I've got a heavenly father, yeah, and all I've got to do is talk to him about it. The old folks said, I've got a telephone in my bosom, yeah, and all I've got to do is call, and they said, one for the father and one for the son, one for the Holy Ghost. And then they went on to say this, that just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. Before I move on from that point, because I'm running out of time, now I noticed in the text that it says prayer and supplication. Well, let me just bring that out, supplication. There have been those who said supplication is, is, is begging, but it's not begging. When you look at this in the original text, it means specific prayer. I can call God and tell him exactly what I want. And after I tell him what I want, that, mean, that doesn't mean he's going to give it to me. But he gives me the opportunity to tell him exactly what I feel I'm in need of. And then after I tell him what I want, I put it in his hands understanding and knowing that he knows a whole lot more than I know. He knows exactly what I need. He says in his word that the gift that I give to you cannot be imagined. He says in his word that whatever you're thinking of, oh yeah, my mind can outthink yours every time. And so I trust him enough that whatever I'm asking for, whatever I'm being specific with, that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond everything I could ask or think. But also he says that while you are talking with God, while you're praying, and while you are supplicating, he says do it with thanksgiving. Oh, bless his name. Somebody even in this crisis ought to be thankful. You say, well, Reverend, how can I be thankful with everything that's going on? Here is the key, brothers and sisters. You don't thank him for what you're going through. You thank him for what he's already brought you through. Oh yeah, you and I should not come to this point and act as if God have not been with us before. He's been with us every step of the way. And let me give you one more. He's going to be there even after the coronavirus is over. He's been with us. And I'm of the mindset now, brothers and sisters, that since God has been with me, oh yeah, these 54 years, and since he has never Never left me nor forsaken me. I'm able to say that we, he and I are going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, hand in hand. That he and I are going to endure this together. That I'm going to put my hand in his hand and we're going to walk together wherever God will lead me. I'm determined to follow. He says when you go through the valley, I'll be there. When you go through the fire, I'll be there. When you go through the flood, I will be there. He never did say we weren't going to go through anything, but he said, I will be there. I'm running out of time here, so I have to close, but I've got one more for you that I've got exposed to you before I let you go. You can have peace today, beloved, when everything is going to pieces, because he says in verse 7, and verse 7 is dependent on the first two things that I told you. You can have peace because he's with you. You can have peace because, yeah, he's talking to you. And when you do that, in true earnest faith, the God I serve will give you peace. Oh, bless his name. I wish I had a crowd so I could get a witness. But he says, and the peace of God, yes, that passes all understanding. I don't know about you, beloved, but I'm, I'm going to have peace. And it's based on who God is in my life. I'm going to have peace because it's based upon what God and I have been through together. I'm going to have peace even in the midst of this because he brought me from some things in the past. He's with me now, and he's going to be with me throughout the future. And so as I close, I just want to give you one word to hang on to, and that word is peace. When all hell breaks loose, peace. When your friends are few, peace. When sickness might be in your house, peace. When death even comes to your family, peace. When people walk out on you, peace. When you have no money, peace. 
peace. Uh, when things seem like they're top to turvy, peace. Uh, even if they lay me off on my job, peace. Uh, oh yes, if in fact I lose everything I have, I still have peace because I have God. I heard somebody say, if I lose everything I have, uh, as long as I have Jesus, uh, I've got enough to start over with. Uh, and so my word is peace. Uh, oh yes, I've got to close it like I normally close sermons. Uh, and so as I close, I'm going to tell you, be not dismayed. Uh, whatever betide, uh, God will take care of you. Uh, beneath his wings, love abide. Uh, God will, uh, yes he will, uh, God will uh, take care, take care of you. Oh bless his name, bless his name. You know beloved, there might be somebody here that's listening to me today and you're about to maybe lose your mind. You may be about to have, have, have a heart attack or a stroke or whatever in behind this calamity that we're in right now. But I want to tell you, you don't have to do that. That don't have to be your posture. There is a man named Jesus and he will give you peace in the midst of a storm no matter what you're going through. I want to invite you today that if you don't know this Jesus that we're talking about, I want you to accept him for yourself. The Bible says that you got to believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus that God raised him from the dead. Being saved is not uh, for a selected group. You can be a part of the family of God by accepting Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you and I promise you that if you accept him, you will be privileged to this peace uh, that the saints of God have even in the midst of what we're going through. I invite you, if you've accepted the Lord today, if you have chosen this opportunity to choose peace, and in, in, in which to live in, that you call somebody, tell somebody that you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we come back to church in weeks or however long we take to come, I invite you to come to the Beth Eden Church. Walk down the aisle and give your testimony and tell them I accepted the Lord weeks ago, but I'm coming to declare it before the church right now. And we're going to shout with you, welcome you into the family of God. Amen? Amen. God bless you and God keep you. And now may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and surely give thee peace. In the name of Jesus the Christ we pray and we thank you Father. Amen.